All right, guys, we got to talk about this trade that went down a couple days ago in the NBA, this huge blockbuster trade that sent Donovan Mitchell to the Cavs for a very big package in return. The Cavs sent Lowry Markkinen, Ochai Abaji, Colin Sexton, three unprotected first round picks and two pick swaps. According to the legend himself, Woj, Adrian, Adrian Wojnarowski, he dropped the biggest Woj bomb of this offseason. So we got to talk about it. Who won the trade? Definitely comment your opinions. Let me know. We're going to break this down from both sides of the equation, both teams involved, both the Cavs and the Jazz. I thought I had to react to this. It's been a couple days. I, I've needed to gather my thoughts. And this is ultimately the conclusion I came up with. So we're going to start with the Jazz side of this trade. So with the Jazz, the writing was kind of on the wall that this team was blowing it up. They were going to tear it down because they already traded Rudy Gobert to the Timberwolves. It was clear that what the Jazz had as a roster the last several years, the combination of Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert was not going to work out in terms of winning a championship. They kept getting eliminated early in the playoffs, and it was pretty obvious that in a loaded Western Conference like it is every year, the West is always loaded, they had no chance basically to get to the finals. This was not a contending team. So with the trade of Rudy Gobert to Minnesota, the writing was pretty much on the wall that Donovan Mitchell would be on the move unless let's say KD were to come to Utah or some, some big player were to come to be partnered up with Donovan Mitchell. But after a majority of the offseason passed, I'm sure Utah felt that they weren't going to be able to get someone of KD's caliber or another big star player to accompany Donovan Mitchell, and they ultimately figured it wasn't worth building around him. They weren't going to be able to build a contending team in all likelihood, so Utah thought, well, we already traded half of our tandem with Rudy Gobert, so we might as well trade Donovan Mitchell. And so for Utah, I think it was something that was necessary. With their current roster, they weren't gonna win anytime soon, so I think if you don't really have a chance to contend, you might as well start over and try to build a new contending roster. So here is Utah with a bunch of first round picks now after the Gobert and Mitchell trade, and I think they are pretty stacked for the future. So I think I give Utah credit because although the fans won't like it, because I'm sure Donovan Mitchell, I mean, after Stockton and Malone, he's probably already the third best player in jazz history for for them to lose their best player by far and away it's definitely going to be tough for jazz fans but in the long term in the long haul for the long haul i should say it's a good trade for Utah. I don't blame them for getting making the trade. They get three first round picks, but they also get a very solid Lowry Markkinen. They get a rookie Ochai Obaji who shined during March Madness for Kansas, the national champions, and you get Colin Sexton. So you get two really good established players and a really good player for the future. So I think Utah got a very good package in return. I don't think they got shafted or anything. They get three unprotected first round picks, albeit Cleveland's going to be really good, so we don't know where they will draft, but a very solid package nonetheless. And for Cleveland, I think this trade takes them from, be from being a fringe playoff team or just barely a playoff team in the East to one of the more legitimate contenders in the East because with all due respect to Colin Sexton, Donovan Mitchell is a clear upgrade. He, he, I think he's going to fit in flawlessly with Darius Garland in the back in the backcourt. And what you have now, if you look at their starting lineup, their projected starting lineup, the Cavs, is Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Karis LeVert, you can't forget about him, and the twin towers of Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. I look at that starting lineup, one through five, and I don't know if I can find a better starting lineup in the Eastern Conference. I don't think any of those five players are a role player. I think all of those players, I wouldn't say they're all stars, but they all have star moments and star qualities. So this is a stacked starting lineup that is young, that's built for the future. They have a great combination of size and defense as well with, you know, Jared Allen and Evan Mobley built both being big time enforcers, great length down, you know, in the paint, obviously, and being great protectors, great twin towers. And Lowry Markkinen wasn't really, that whole experiment with having kind of a triplet tower with Lowry Markkinen, three seven-foot-ish guys, that wasn't really going to work because Markkinen, he had to play on the perimeter. He was like another Porzingis. It just wasn't really working out, I think. So I think it's the right thing for Cleveland to trade Colin Sexton, who wasn't really playing well with Darius Garland, even when he was healthy. I think Colin Sexton's closer to a point guard than a shooting guard. So you get an upgrade at Don with Donovan Mitchell, a guy who is even better than he is in the regular season. In the postseason, his numbers get better. So Cleveland now has a contending team, I think, 
and <clears throat> look out for them. They're really dangerous in the East, and you also can't forget about their bench because they still have Kevin Love, Ricky Rubio, so this is a deep team. They have Isaac Okoro. This is a really, really good team now, and Cleveland is finally in a position to be a contending team without LeBron at long last after years of build up, building up first-round picks, rebuilding. They are now in win-now mode officially, and Cleveland, I think, now has what it takes to hang with the big dogs in the East and honestly in the NBA. So a great trade for both teams, great trade for Cleveland to upgrade their roster for the net present and the future, and Utah building for the future after they already traded Rudy Gobert. So I think it's a really good trade for both sides. I apologize to the Knicks fans out there who wanted Donovan Mitchell. I apologize to the Heat fans who wanted him, but who wouldn't want Donovan Mitchell at the end of the day? But from what I heard, the Knicks were offering RJ Barrett, and I believe a couple other people, but I don't think they were offering three first rounders. I think they were only offering two. So ultimately Utah felt like Cleveland was the better package and they got a very nice package in return as I already mentioned. So I can't blame Utah for sending Donovan Mitchell to the Cavs. So that's where Donovan Mitchell ultimately ends up. That's what goes down. And towards the latter half of the offseason, we have the biggest trade of the offseason so far. Definitely huge blockbuster trade. I definitely thought it was worth talking about. And I definitely think it's worth hearing your guys' opinions. Comment your opinions. Let me know who you think won this trade. Do you like this trade for both sides? Either side, one side. I don't know. I want to hear any and all of your opinions, guys. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're an NBA fan, sports fan. Why not? It's free. Consider it if you haven't done so already. And with that being said, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.